What a way to get off the mark. One of Fairbrother's specials. Timing, placement, perfect. Well, this is good stuff. Exactly what Lancashire wants, what they need. You say you know where Fairbrother gets his runs, but uh, he gets them all around the pitch. Get four for that, mainly because of the very, very fast outfield, and it takes Fairbrother on to a tremendous half century. Good skipper's mark. Delighted to have with me one of my teammates uh, for a long, long, long time ago and for a very long time. Great mate of mine, uh, great roommate of mine, uh, and one of Lancaster's <laughs> best, best players. Harvey, how are you doing, pal? I'm very good, Chuck. Very good in these strange times. Everything's oh, all right. Yeah, as well. Very strange as well, are they? What, how, are you, how are you coping with the time in, inside? What are you doing with yourself? Oh, what, what have we been now? Three weeks. We've yeah. been three weeks. So we've got, we've got ourselves into a little routine. We've got two dogs, thankfully, that are keeping us well and truly on our toes. So we're out <laughs> early with them, uh, and that gets the day going, and then try and settle into some work um, through the day. And then it gets to five o'clock and we're watching, turn, not watching the news anymore, but we no. do watch the government thing at five o'clock. And then that gets us to six o'clock and it's happy hour. So It is happy hour. Yeah, Your happy hour starts at six. Mine starts about half five. I must admit, <laughs> half five. So we do six to eight as an happy hour. Brilliant. Well, you look at, you're looking fit, mate. You're looking healthy and fit. So you must be doing something right. I think it's just, just literally the dogs and clearly... Uh, one of our clients, Josh Butler, um, and one of obviously Lank's players, um, yeah. his wife Louise is running a Pilates class online. So right. we've been doing that each day at 12.30. It's absolutely top draw. She's a great teacher. Uh, would recommend yeah. it to anybody that wants to have a, a bit of a sweat at lunchtime. Uh, and it just gets a few of the stresses out. So we've been doing that. Audrey's really good at it. I'm not so good. Um, but we're having a laugh at it. <laughs> Well, let, let's let's face it, Harv. Me, me, me and you in the gym in our days, it wasn't. They didn't go together much, did they? No, it was a chore, wasn't it? A bit of a chore, the gym. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. So let, let's just talk. Let's just talk about some of some of the days we we, we played together. And we played in that uh, that that great era of Lancashire cricket in in the in the nineties. You you made your debut at Lancashire, if I'm right, really early eighties, about 82, 83, under Jack Bond. Tell us a little bit about that because it's just, it was a nice story. Yeah, Bondi, I hadn't played much second team cricket. Um, and one Saturday morning, I'm ready to go and play for Grappenhall uh, as an 18-year-old. And the phone went, I was still in bed, the phone went and my mum came running up the stairs and she said, she came bursting into a uh, bedroom and said, uh, Jack Bond's on the phone. Uh, Lancashire are short. Are they playing Kent in a championship game? It was about nine o'clock. And she said, we've got to be there in an hour. So I told her to go away politely because I thought somebody <laughs> was taking the mickey out of us. Uh, she insisted and we got to Old Trafford and there was a load of injuries and Bondi was waiting for us at, at, the, at the gate, took me upstairs and uh, Clive Lloyd was captain. So there was Clive, there was Frank Hayes, there was Bumble, there was David Hughes, there was Jack Simmons and then the, obviously the younger lads who were playing for England then, Graham Fowler, Paul Allert all absolute heroes of mine, I'd never met. And an hour ago I was in bed and an hour later I'm sat in a dressing room with them. Um, <laughs> we fielded all that first day, <laughs> got halfway home, mum had to stop the car and I was bloody sick through nerves. Um, went back the next day and I played in the Sunday league the next day with about 10,000 on. Didn't bat Saturday, didn't bat Sunday, but I caught a catch at long gone off Jack Simmons and thought that was going to be the pinnacle of my career. Um, <laughs> it's a brilliant then story didn't, that. didn't bat on the rained all day on the Monday, so didn't bat on the Monday. Kent set a declaration on a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, David Lloyd Bumble scored a magnificent 150. Yeah. Lanks beat Kent, and I did nothing for four days but take a catch. <laughs> and then, and then, about a month later, the season finished, and got a call. 
and went into Old Trafford with my mum and dad and Jack Bond was in, was in his office. He was manager, obviously, at the time. And he sat down and he offered me a two-year contract and he said to all three of us, but obviously to me mainly, he said, I look at myself as a chance maker and all I'm doing is giving you the chance to become a professional cricketer. Mm. Um, and they were his very words that obviously I never forgot. Um, and, you know, amazing, amazing moments and amazing days. And Jack Bond was an amazing man. He was an absolute legend of the club, uh, of Lancashire cricket. Um, and I couldn't speak highly enough about him. No, you, you couldn't. And I, I was in the same boat as you. I, I signed under Bond in 86. Uh, and he said very similar words to me. You know, my chances were playing at that time were, were pretty slim. Remember, we had Chris Maynard and Stanley with his keepers. And I came in as third, third choice. And he said the same to me. You know, we're giving you an opportunity. Make the most of it. Don't leave anything behind. Uh, I, I found that about Bondi though. He was a great man manager. One, he was. He was like. He was like. Um, he's like someone who put his arm around you and, and, and really pushed you into the right way. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll obviously we'll come on to happy days. One of our my saddest weekends was the 1986. We played the NatWest final at Lords on the Saturday, and it was Clive's last last game before he, or last weekend before he retired. Uh, and he was batting number four and I was batting number five. And he walked out to bat and the whole ground stood up and applauded him. And we were all obviously out on the balcony and looking through the windows at Lords out onto the pitch. And I, th I think the only person in the whole ground not clapping him on was Imran Khan. We were playing Sussex and Imran didn't clap him on. And he was LBW first ball to Dermot Reeve. And I think it's the only time I've walked into bat with tears coming down me, uh, down my cheeks. It, it was that emotional. And obviously really? we went on to lose that game. And then on the Sunday, we drove to Gloucester and played at Bristol in the Sunday League, as you did in those days. Um, and that night, we got back to Old Trafford at midnight and members of the board were waiting for Bondi to get off the, uh, off the coach. And they relieved him of his position that night, there and then. Okay. And that weekend, you know, we've had all those great days, but that weekend is one of the things that, you know, one of the sadder things. Yeah, it was. It was. It was really sad. But you touched on something before that that always always makes me giggle and always makes me, uh, you know, because we we spent a lot of many happy days together. You know, waiting waiting next to each other, waiting to go into bat and to and to, and to see innings is off. But and people say, you know what? I watch I watched Harvey for years, and he was the greatest one day batsman at Lancashire have ever had. He was cool, calm, collected, never showed any kind of nerves. But we know different, don't we? <laughs> I was all right once I got on the field, wasn't that? There's no worse thing, was it? I was I was all right once I got once I got on the field. I was fine, wasn't I? But waiting to bat, if there was ever a more nervous person than me waiting to bat, then I'd like to see him. You were fine, you were absolutely fine. But once you crossed that white line, it was a different world, wasn't it? And um, yeah. you know, you knew what you had to do, and you just got on with your job, and you did it. And we were lucky. We played, we played with so many top top class players over different eras um perhaps i played in one more era earlier than you and you played one more year era after me but yeah you know when we when we look back now that 1989 90 91 era was one era and then we had a transition period and we came to 95 96 almost through to 98 um mm. and they were two mega mega periods for us weren't they um you're, you're great. And, you know, I, I, I thought about, as we, I knew we were going to have a chat, and I thought about listing um, teams, my best championship team that I played with, English, and my best one-day team that I played with, English only, Lancastrians. Mm -hmm. And there were that many names that yeah. it was bloody impossible to pick a team. You know, it was mm. just, just some of the people we played with um, over that period. But, you know, I don't know what you think. And we had two mega teams, didn't we? Um, Ser serious teams. And we had, we, had, we had that. We spoke to Bully last week and we mentioned that, that, uh, that, that it, was, it was very much like the Lancashire class of 92. Your Fairbrother, Watkinsons, Austins, Martins, Yates, 
uh, you know, people like that Crawleys, who, who were all born and bred in around the northwest, had learned the cricket there. And then you, you added a couple of absolute worldies, your likes of your, your Akrams and your Defratuses and people like that that came in. It strengthened us even more that, that it, during that era, you, you'll know it was, uh, we, we were very, very tough to beat. Mm, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've written me one day team down. I can't do my championship team. I just can't do it. And I think that no. if there was one year, I think 1990 is a one day team, we were mm. nigh on unbeatable. We mm. won the Bensons, didn't we? We won the Nat West. We lost three games in the Sunday League. And yeah. they were the three test match weekends when others, Daffy, and myself were away. And they were the only three games we lost all year. And when we had a full team, we didn't just win games, did we, that year? We, were just, we just smashed everybody out of sight. Um, yeah. Which, you know, it was an unbalanced team in many ways because it didn't have a spinner. Um, no. <laughs> and yet, for some reason, it worked. We were far better than everybody else. Um, you know, it was, it was brilliant. Walter owned the bowling, didn't he? Uh, it was as steady as a rock. And then we had Daffy, Daffy Waz, and then we had Bully and, and Winker as yeah. your five seam prong attack. And it was just, I just thought we were miles better than everybody. We, we could, and because we, 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 we'd grown up in, 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 in playing a lot, playing league cricket and on one day cricket, we could, uh, we, we could, we could bat first and get, and get 300, which in them days was, a, was, a, was unheard of. And we could we could defend 150 if we, we were lucky enough to get any. And I think that was that never say die attitude that that group of people had that made us a real tight knit unit, wasn't it? Mm. And we and we got you get used to winning, don't you? Mm. And we through a through a period. I mean, remember the we played in that final at Edgebaston in '88, which was the yeah. refuge playoff final or something. And that was the start of it, really. Yeah. And then we was. got used to winning. We won the Sunday League in '89 when Walter hit those fours and sixes in that last game when it looked like we'd lost. Um, what a night that was, by the way. Uh, and then, you know, then we went into 1990. Simo retired, didn't he, at the end of 89? Because yeah. obviously Jack had been our, our spinner. Um, and then 1990 happened and it was, it was amazing. Yeah. And then we went through and then, as you say, we got, we got proper Lancastrian, didn't we, then in 93, 94, 95. Yeah. Um, and although I say 1990 was what I thought was our biggest, best year, yeah. when I've done my one day team here, there are more from that Lancashire 95, 96 unit yeah. in my one day team than, than the 90 unit. But hey, mm. I don't know. It's, it was amazing. It was amazing. You, and mentioned then, yeah. celebrations. you mentioned celebrations and, you know, the, the, the times we had and the, the, the times we had after the game. And I look at old footage of us on the balcony and there's even even in the Brown Shipley Suite now at, at, at Emirates Old Trafford, there's a scene where we, we'd won a game and there's yourself and, and Waz uh, and, and Oscar uh, and Peter Martin and myself all arms around each other. A uh, glass of champagne or a Budweiser or whatever, and you know, and the, the actual <laughs> Lee and I, there was not a protein shake inside. <laughs> there was certainly no orange juice, was there? <laughs> <laughs> no. But you no. know, the, the, those days, remember when uh, Digger hit the last ball of that semi final that you'd smashed it everywhere for four to win that game, and then yeah. we actually drove up to Durham that night, did we? We drove up to Durham that night to play championship the next day yeah. but I think we did have, we did have one or two that night in the hotel in Durham from what I remember um. <laughs> but what about what about that what about in the days you've mentioned the days where there's loads of traveling and we we, we played Worcester we played Worcester in a final at Lords I don't know if it's Benson Edges and that West we like you say we, we always into a bit of a blur. 1990 1990 and then we traveled back the morning the next morning after being in Stringfellows for dinner did. with all our families and wives and girlfriends and everything and then we we travel back up the next morning to play Worcester again in a Sunday league game and that they traveled the night before <laughs> they came up Saturday night they'd lost obviously the final yeah they traveled up that night we stayed down went to Stringfellas we got back to Old Trafford about 40 minutes before the game if you remember yeah. <laughs> and we smashed them again yeah. <laughs> 
you remember? Again, and that on that Sunday, Wazim, you remember he hit Graham Hick on the head? Yes. He hit Hickey on the head, and next ball demolished his stumps with a Yorker. Yeah. And it was absolutely unbelievable stuff, wasn't it? I mean, you yeah. were stood behind the, you saw it first hand from behind the stump year on year. But you know, you could talk about Waz all day, couldn't you? Yeah, well, let, let's you know, let's give him, let's give Waz some some attention here because, like, people ask me who's the best cricket he ever played with, and I don't even have to think that he is the, the best all round cricketer that that I ever played with, and he was brilliant for us, wasn't he? Oh, unbelievable, unbelievable. We we when we signed him, we were out in Sharjah. England were playing Pakistan and India in Sharjah, and Laurie Brown, Lanks physio, was the England physio. Yes, sir. And whether it was Bob Bennett or somebody, chairman of the club at the time, had, had rung myself and Laurie and said, we're interested in this Wazzy Makram. Go and speak to him. And Waz was a right young lad, if, wasn't he, at that point? Yeah, and we, we met him behind a palm tree so nobody could see us, trying to tap him up. And we talked to him. And I, th I think he thought he was going to come and play for somebody like Accrington in the Langshire League. <laughs> And then, the, and then he came and joined us, didn't he? And his first game, if you remember, was at Trent Bridge. Yeah. A I championship think. and a, a one-day game. And he came, he was as thin as a lat, wasn't he? Yeah. And he sat in the corner at Trent Bridge, never said boo to a goose. And that was the start of him playing. Really funny. It bowled and that game was the first yeah. time we saw reverse swing. Yeah. In, in not second innings, he cleaned him up. He, he did. Uh, and then he taught, well, you know, he taught all our lads, didn't he? he taught well, Oscar, to... Oscar mentioned it. Oscar alluded to it last week. The, fir the first time he bowled with Waz at the other end to Waz, at the back end of an innings, where Oscar was deadly, wasn't he, with Yorkers. He was as good as anyone with the, yeah. the Yorkers. He, he bowled three wides on the trot because he didn't realise <laughs> it was a real swing. And so we had, we had a good chat with Oscar about that last week. And oh. yeah, he, he, was, he, was a, he was a player that could bowl 90 mile an hour. Yeah. He could hit it, hit it out of the ground. He could field like a gazelle. Mm. Uh, and he was an all-round good guy, wasn't he, for us? He, I mean, um, he, 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 he regards Lancashire as his second home. He has, still has a home here. Yeah. Uh, comes over every summer. Um, we all love him. He loves us all. And, and you know, we were teammates for, what, 10, 11 years with him, weren't we? Long time. Um, when, he first, when he first came over as well, he couldn't speak much English, was yeah. it? It was all yeah. and, and And now he, he tells jokes with the best, doesn't he? <laughs> he doesn't. Uh, uh, the remember the semi final at Leicester when we'd only got about 180? Yeah, I do. And he had a sore heel and he only had pumps on. Yeah. Bowled a couple of overs and, and said it wasn't good. And then he, they were knocking him off, weren't they? And he looked at the ball and he said, Harvey, I will come and bowl now. <laughs> and he got five for one in pumps, didn't he? <laughs> I remember Nico. I remember Nico. He cleaned Nico up, didn't he? About ninety mile an hour in swinging Yorker to Nico, and Nico. I think he just laughed. Nico. He just said, "I can't hit that. I can't hit that. That's impossible. Huh? Impossible." It was. It was brilliant. And we know we're looking. We're looking to to speak to him next week as well. So it'd be great right. to. It'd be great to catch up on it and, and talk about them them old yeah. days. Harvey, we, we we talked about we talked about that that, that squad in ninety ninety six, and you you mentioned that there was a that, that your, your one of your best best 11s that could take the field in that area. Go on, give us a, talk us through a little bit of it. Give us a, give us a, what it was like. You well, I'll, I'll give you a, an 11. Um, and if, if, what I want to put a big context on this, like played with Jimmy Anderson for a little while, really only in championship cricket. So I've not got Jimmy in this 11. He certainly would be in any Lancashire one day 11, obviously. Um, so Jimmy's not quite, played long enough with me to be in this 11 of, this is through the 90 through to 98 era. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you played with, we, yeah. so number one on the list is Graham Fowler, um, who opening those 1990 finals for us and before and after, obviously he was, I think ahead of the game because he was an attacking batsman who often got us off to, to the flyer that we needed, which, only happened latterly, sort of 94, 95, 96 onwards, really. So he was ahead of his game. He was ahead of the time. So he was number one. Number two, obviously, is Michael Atherton. Um, he was 
the linchpin of our teams. Everybody batted round him, and he would be my opening batsman in there with Graham. Number three, a man that would be in my championship team, my one-day team, any Lancashire team, and that's John Crawley. Uh, fantastic player, fantastic Lancastrian again. Um, thought about the game inside out, could play the percentages, could play the big shots, and, and you know, he had everything that was that was required of a top class player. Number four, bit of promotion up the order, I think. Number four, Andrew Flintoff. Uh, Freddie came into the into the team and was part of the team that won the '98 uh, Sunday League and the Nat West also. I think we won in '98, so he was a big part of that. So he bats number four again. Nobody nobody needs to know about Fred, but he could clear the boundaries. Great hitter of a cricket ball, also a good technician, and then and then he's bowling. He became one of the one of the best bowlers of his generation for quite some time. So he he's in there, Graham Lloyd, number five, young Bumble, unbelievable runner between the wickets, innovator, was the first, one of the first people to play the reverse sweep numerous times um, and was an integral part of us winning lots and lots of cricket matches. Number six, man that played through all those big games, both as captain and not as captain, would be Mike Watkinson, tremendous cricketer. Uh, both as a batsman and a bowler, a real wily character um, and was a deceptively good fieldsman as well. So he was in there at six. Then number seven and eight, they can argue for who bats where, would be Warren Hegg, yourself, Chuck, as, as my wicketkeeper and unbelievably rightly so. Um, great batsman, saw us home so many times and as a, a wicketkeeper both stood up and stood back. I can't talk highly enough of you. So he, you'd be in there. Then Daffy would be just behind you. Fantastic, again, amazing cricketer, all rounder, brilliant in the field. Opened the bowling for England in the in the '92 World Cup and, and got us all the way through to the final. Won us a, I think, won us the 1990 Nat West with a five for spit. Uh, the game was over an hour in, so he's in there. Number nine, my spinner. Um, Gary H just edges out Jack Simmons and Simo if you're listening to this the reason you're not in was I think Yatesy was probably a better fielder than you and that's what it came down to so nothing to choose bowling wise between between Jack and, and Gary and even though Yates is a City fan he still makes my team um, where are we up to two to go number 10 undoubtedly Low in the batting order for his um, for his skill sets, but Ian Austin um, has to be in my all-time one-day Lancashire team. Could bowl at the start, could bowl in the middle, and crucially could bowl at the end of an innings. Wasn't the quickest, but his skill sets got him through and got Lancashire through on numerous, numerous occasions. And last, last but not least, just pipping Peter Martin, who himself was an incredible, incredible bowler one day and championship for, for Lanx is Glenn Chappell. Um, Chappie had skill sets that not many had and when it was his day he could run through a batting order as he did in the 96 NatWest final when he bowled, helped bowl Essex out for 90 odd and, and win as another comp. So that's my 11. It's a pretty good 11. If anybody wants to argue, please come to me on Twitter. Okay. That's a, that's a very, very strong 11. But if it's, like you say, we're, we're a team. We've always been a team. You'd have a squad, wouldn't you? You'd have a squad. Oh, yeah. Of... I mean, you know, I've got, I've got <laughs> names on names on names written down here. Paul Allen doesn't yeah. quite get into this one-day team. But in 1989, 1991, he was unbelievable for us. Yes, he um, was. So one name here that I only played with a few times, and it was only in championship, but he scored 150 at Horsham in 1983 against Imran and Garth LaRue on a rapid wicket yeah. was Frank Hayes. Right. And Frank, that day, that inning sticks in my mind. Um, and if I'm picking a championship team with, with moments, 
he'd probably be in my championship team. Wow. Um, but that's a bit before your time, that one, Chuck. It is, yeah, we, we, you know, we, we have the former players now, Harvey, as you know, and, and Frank's a real, real stalwart of, of the Lancashire um, former players. And it's always great to see him. He's a cheery character. He loves coming back to Emirates Old Trafford. And uh, Frank, Frank, yeah, Frank is one of those Lancashire legends that, that, that we, we, we love to be associated with. Brilliant. You mentioned there, you, 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 you captained the side, 92-93. Yeah. Again, a great honour it must have been to have captain in the team. No, absolutely. You know, as, as you know only too well, you, you want to play for Lancashire, you want to play for England, but you also want a captain. Um, and I was lucky enough to do it for two years. Yeah. Um, and probably it was just the start of a transition period for us. Um, and I loved most of it didn't quite understand at the time how much politics was going to be involved and how much committee room was going to be in, involved in it all. Um, but, you know, walking out onto the field with the lads and, and the actual captaincy on the field, I absolutely, I absolutely adored. And, you know, it makes you even prouder, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I still, I still look at that board now, Harv. I still look at it, you know, when you go into Emirates Old Trafford and it says your name on the captain's lift with all those esteemed great players that are around you. think, you know, how did, how, how did I end up being captain? <laughs> <laughs> they, must, they must have been short that oh, month. Oh, God, yeah. it, you know, but, but the players that we played with and then you come on through that era to the 94, 95, 96 when Winker was captain. Yeah. Um, and and that era was also amazing for us, wasn't it? Um, and we won a double, and we won the Bensons, and then we won the Sunday League a bit later in '98, didn't we? Um, and Fred had appeared by that time as well, hadn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. So I was going to ask you about Fred. I was going to ask you about Fred because well, I know you. We'll get on to Fred in a minute. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, just going back, some of the we won at Worcester in the semi-final. And again, you, you and Yatesy and and was was home, yeah. um, and those of us that were in and out, we were sat in the changing room. The game was well and truly away from us, and then it mm. came back to us, and nobody moved. You weren't allowed to move that night in your spot, and clearly we won an unbelievably tight finish, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and I remember us having a sing song in the changing room that night. And if you remember, the uh, members' bar was right next to our changing room, and my mum and dad were sat right by the wall <laughs> between the dressing room and the bar. And eventually, we came out and went into the bar, didn't we? You did. And I got a right <laughs> off my mum for, for for swearing as we were singing. <laughs> I remember it. Brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. Yeah, another another one of those days where we, we, we snatched victory mm. well from the jaws of defeat and we did it we did it a few times. It was that never say die attitude of, mm. of that team. And you know, we've we've not we've not mentioned him much, we've not mentioned others much. You know, a, a great mate of ours who we grew up with and we he was part of that part of that, that era, part of that dressing room, part of that culture that we had. Um, and he ended up one of our mates being being England captain. I was so, so proud of the fact that we oh, we played with him. Unbelievable. I mean, remember when he came into the changing room in '87, and he was still at Cambridge. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, some things have never changed. He was never wrong back then, and he's still never wrong now, is he? <laughs> um, he came in to the changing room, and he immediately went straight into the first team, um, and just took to it like it was second nature, didn't he? Um, he was so good. I think what people don't understand um, later on in his career, when he was playing for England and he'd had his bad back, mm. um, if you think, you know, when he played against Donald in, in those two series, he, he was opening the batting against the world's fastest bowlers. And he couldn't duck. No. All he could do was stand up and play the ball. Mm. And the bravery of the man. At that point, you think, oh, my gosh, he's, been, he's a great player in his own right. Mm. But, you know, the ticker that he had, the resolve that he had was just, you know, unbeatable, wasn't it? Oh, um, it was and that, but when he was younger, back in 1990 again, he was the mainstay of our batting in 1990, wasn't he? You know, he just he just stayed in all those innings like a rock and we went in and... 
and did our bit around it. Um, and, you know, that can never be underestimated through that time. And then later on, he was just as proud as we are that we turned out 11 Lancastrians in a final. Um, and, you know, that's what it was all about, wasn't it? But it, again, he's one of the lads, isn't he? He's one of the boys. And, and you, you've mentioned that. Adders, and he'd be, he'd be the first to admit it, he couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> But put a cricket bat and a pair of pads and an helmet on. He was the bravest man. He yeah. turned into a gladiator, didn't he? And he was, yeah. he was, a, he was a, a very, very brave, brilliant player. And, and you know, I, I just, I, I just think, you know, we, we, we were, we were lucky to to play with that yeah. kind of a, uh, that that kind of, uh, that kind of player. But you know, let's 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 move on a little bit hard to um, the ground, Emirates Old Trafford. Now it's not the place it was when we played with, with yeah. those. But even so, what a place it's turned out to be now. Well, I mean, we used to think that it was a great cricket ground, didn't we? Brilliant. When we were young, we thought Old Trafford was a great cricket ground. And it was it was at the time, and then it went into a little bit of a decline. And I, I guess, I don't know, what has happened to it over the last six or seven years and the redevelopment that has gone on, the money that has been poured into, into the new facilities, the new facilities themselves. The cricket ground now holds itself with more or less any other cricket ground in the world. Um, and I believe there's another little bit of last redevelopment to do. Yeah. You know, when that last bit of redevelopment is done and it's going to be an amphitheatre all the way around, it'll be a bowl, won't it? Um, but, you know, you, you, you couldn't be prouder of the way it's turned out. Mm -hmm. And people used to say, look at that red box. Well, now that red box is integrated and... You know, I, when the big stands up there, I think the atmosphere within the ground is just sensational. Um, and it's a credit to everybody that's been involved in, in the hard work that's gone in to bringing our club back up to a world-class venue. And, and you, you mentioned it before, you know, you look, you look after some of, uh, some of England's best players now, some of the best, best players. They must, they must really enjoy coming to Old Trafford, to, to, to Emirates Old Trafford, to, to play for England. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it sticks in Joe Root's throat that Old Trafford's now a bloody good ground because he's a Yorkshire. <laughs> but, you know, he loves batting on the he loves batting on the ground. They all love to come and play in the atmosphere that he's created, and most of them will tell you that it's probably the best Test match wicket in the country. So, you know, somebody's done something right somewhere, haven't they? But we're talking about great teams that we've had, and one of our biggest squad players was our groundsman, wasn't it? Oh, and, definitely. Oh, uh, and absolutely, yeah. Pete was an absolute Lancashire legend. You know, you go on about players and ex-players. Well, our groundsman stands amongst anybody that is a legend of our club. He must have been 30-odd years at the club. And he ended up making the best wickets in the country by far. He was as proud of punch every time Lancashire won a game. We took him into our squad, into our dressing room, and he became one of our team, didn't he? Um, yeah, and he and he and he celebrated with us. He, he felt he felt when we got we got beat, and he, he was he was our mate, wasn't he? Like you said, he was a squad player, and he was he was our pal. He, 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 yeah. he, he, no one liked a, a party and a beer and a late night as much as Pete did. No, no. I, I mean, one little quick story. When I was captain, we we. Said to him, one, one of the, you'll remember that we thought the wickets were too good for championship cricket, too hard and, and too fast and bouncy for our little seamers. Yeah. And Malcolm Marshall bowled us out one day. And he was not a medium paced seamer, obviously, was he? Um, and he, Pete came in the captain's room at tea. And I said, you know, what, what is this wicket for us? It, you know, it just suits Malcolm Marshall, it suits the opposition. And he picked me up and he dangled me over the balcony. And he said, do you want to say that to me again? And he pulled me back over and we went and had a beer. Um, he was a great man and we loved him. And, um, and it was an incredibly, incredibly sad day when he passed away, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's really nice words. And, and you know, Pete, Pete will, uh, will stay in our memories, memories forever, Harper. Let's just, let's just finish on, 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 on Lancashire, the Red Rose at the moment. What, what do you think of the current squad? I think um, I think the last couple of years there's been a a, a great turnaround, um, and you know I'm really excited 
by the squad they've got now and, and the future for the club. Um, I, I can see us going from strength to strength. You know, it'd be great to win another championship, wouldn't it? Um, but the one day team, you know, the, the likes of Livingston, Parkinson, Mahmoud's come through. These are young Lancastrians mm. that take me back to our to our day, um, and they are the future of our club. Um, and you know, you add that with a with a bit, bit of experience, which which they've also got. And then there's the youngsters like Rob Jones coming through, um, and the future I think is is unbelievably bright. Unbelievably bright, and I'm, I'm, you know, if we get out on the field this summer at any stage, I'm really looking forward to watching them. Absolutely, led by uh, led by one of our other old mates as well, Glenn Chapel at the moment, who's who's you know gone right through the ranks as a as a player, um, as, as a captain, and now head coach of the club, and bringing a real, really good culture to that team. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's I think it's brilliant that the director of cricket is a Lancastrian great. The head coach is a Lancastrian great. Mm. Mark Chilton ably supporting them. Fantastic stalwart of the club. Yeah. A Lancashire great in yourself mm. with, within that commercial department and, and helping run the club. So, you know, the players and ex-players and the club is steeped. And I love that fact. And I think that that's why, you know, over the last two or three years, we've got back to maybe being a bit more old-style Lancashire. Yeah, and that that feeling, that's brilliant. Yeah, so, yeah I, I, Harley, it's been brilliant to speak to me. You're you you are a legend of the club. You know, it's, you're one of Lancashire's best ever batsmen, one of Lancashire's best ever servants, and it's it's always brilliant to catch up uh, and have a chat and remember. Also, we could have spoke for for three or four hours. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Uh, of, of, of of memories, but it's a, a little snippet for people, hopefully to to enjoy in these these very tough times. Where we 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 must stipulate people stay safe, um, and 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 look after each other and stay healthy. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what we're all trying to do: stay safe, stay stay healthy, stay in, mm. and when the time comes, we'll all get together again at, down at Old Trafford. Brilliant, loving it, loving the fact, Harvey. Legend, thank you very much. Cheers, Chuck.